So today, lesson three, we're going to talk about the concept of or. And what I mean by that is we're going to ask ourselves, what if the question says, what are the odds of this or that happening? And as a subheading, you may see under objectives, it says, when do you add probabilities? And if you want a shorthand way to remember that or means add. And I kind of threw that in last unit already with combinatorics. I said that and means multiply last unit, which is really going to become important this unit, Jesse. And or means add, but it's not quite that simple. So the question asks, when do you add probabilities? And we have here a lovely generic Venn diagram. If each of the 13 outcomes in the sample space is equally likely, find the following probabilities by counting the outcomes. So what's the probability of event A? I said last day, if you can count it, you can solve it. What's the probability of whatever the heck event A is? What is the probability? Four out of 13. What's the probability of event B? Three out of 13. What's the probability of A or B? Seven out of 13. What's the probability of A and B? What's the overlap? Zero. And then over here, we have a key term that you're going to need to know. You underline it. I'm going to highlight it. Mutually exclusive. We say that, looking at this Venn diagram, we say that events A and B are mutually exclusive because there is no overlap. That's from the Venn diagram. What we're really saying is, or the probability of A and B is zero. They can't both happen at the same time. If event A is a red card and event B is a club, what's the probability of getting a red card and a club at the same time from one card? Zero. You can't be a club and be red at the same time. You can be a club, but you can't be red. Okay? If event A is rolling a one and event B is rolling an even number, what's the probability of rolling a one and an even number at the same time? You can't, there's no overlap. You can't. Then it asks. What's the relationship between the probability of A or B, the probability of A and the probability of B? How are these numbers related? Well, I'm noticing the probability of A or B is really the first one plus the second one. Or, as I hinted last unit, or means add. Because 4 out of 13 plus 3 out of 13 is 7 out of 13. Situation 2. So we have another lovely Venn diagram. What's the probability of A here? Don't say 3 out of 13 because it's not. It's still 1, 2, 3. There's still 4 dots in this circle. What's the probability of event B? 5 out of 13. What's the probability of event A or B? How many dots are in one or the other or both? 8 out of 13. What's the probability of A and B? What's the overlap? 1 out of 13. Can you see any kind of relationship between these four numbers? Specifically, if I said, I'd like to come up with an equation, the probability of A or B is equal to what? The probability of A plus the probability of B. That gives me 9 out of 13. I want an answer of 8 out of 13. Oh, minus the overlap and... Thank you. 
and this is the OR equation. This one here is actually the same equation. There is a minus the probability of A and B right there, but the reason it's invisible is what is the probability of A and B from this previous example? Zero, and we don't write zeros if we don't need to. This is the general equation. This is the if you're mutually exclusive equation. So events A and B are not mutually exclusive. Why are these not mutually exclusive? How can you tell just by glancing at the over at the over whoops at the Venn diagram? Okay, because they overlap. Or probability of A and B is not equal to zero. Red card and a jack. Can you be a red card and a jack at the same time? Yes. If you wanted to find the probability of getting, let's say I did so well with the club last time, I'll go, how about right there? I got a red card. 50 50 chance. Not that impressive, actually. But the probability of getting a red card or a jack is not a 50 50 chance. It's a little different. Or is it? So. The addition law, the general case, the probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the overlap. So I fibbed a little bit last unit when I said or means add. What I should have said was uh, or means add minus any overlapping stuff that you've counted twice. Oh. And if they're mutually exclusive, then, or does mean add. And that's what we were doing last unit. Last unit, anything that we were counting had no overlap. Specifically, when we were doing committee questions, you weren't picking somebody twice for the same committee. So they couldn't be the first one and the second one. Example one. One card is drawn randomly from a deck of 52 cards. Event S is the card is a spade. I'm going to say I'm going to do this in black. And I'm going to circle all of the spades. That's this one right here. Event R is that the card is red. I'll do that in red. All the red cards... Are right here. Are events S and R mutually exclusive? Yes. Now it's easy to see from the picture. You will have to just be able to visualize and use your imagination. And most of the time, it's common sense. Can it happen at the same time? Yes or no? Uh, event F is that we are a face card. I'll use blue. Now the face cards are this group here. So it asks, which of these three events are mutually exclusive? I think only two of them are. I think S and R. So it says, determine the following probabilities by counting the outcomes. What's the probability of a spade? I don't want it reduced, please. 13 out of 52, because later on, uh, Tyler, when you're using the addition law, Jesse, you want to help me out? To your right. Strong elbow. He needs it. Oh, he needs it. He was gone. Uh, Tyler, I don't want to reduce, because if I'm using the addition law, won't I want it out of 52 with a common denominator anyways? So that, that's why I said to you guys, don't bother reducing your fractions. Do it at the end on your calculator if you need to, fine. But meanwhile... Uh, oh, what's the probability of a red card? 26 out of 52. What's the probability that we're a spade and a red card? What's the overlap? Zero. What's the probability that we're a spade or a red card? I think, correct me if I'm wrong, 39 out of 52. It's 13 times 3.
Uh, probability of a spade we said was 13 out of 52. Probability of a face card. Oh, what was the probability of a face card? How many face cards are circled? 12 out of 52? What's the probability that your spade and a face card? Three out of 52. What's the probability you're a spade or a face card? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, I think. Now that's doing this by counting. So we want to break away from having to count. So I'll scroll up so I can't see the deck of cards. It says, use the addition law. The probability of S or R is going to be the probability of S plus the probability of R minus the overlap, M. Oh, by the way, this formula here, this one, sorry, this one, the general case, is on your formula sheet. Although I kind of remember or means add minus overlap. Which is going to be 13 out of 52 plus 26 out of 52 minus, oh, we said the overlap was 0. And you can get the 39 out of 52 without physically counting. S or F going to be the probability of S plus the probability of F minus the overlap. So here's how I would do this question if I didn't have these numbers in front of me. I would say to myself, self, how many spades are there in the deck? 13 out of 52 plus how many face cards are there in the deck? 12 out of 52 minus how many face cards are also spades? Three? Jack, queen, king, spades? And this is where you also get your answer of 22 out of 52. So before we turn the page, you got a little bit of room at the bottom here. Find the probability of red or jack. Try this one on your own. It's going to be the probability of R plus the probability of J minus the probability of R and J. 26 out of 52 plus 4 out of 52 minus how many red jacks are? Oh, 2 out of 52. Uh, 30 minus 2, 28 out of 52. That's, Tyler, where the don't reduce your fractions really comes in here. It, uh, yes, 28, right? Okay. Are we going to play any games? Oh, just you wait. What, one year, back when I had an honors class and I was way ahead of the game when we were on semester, we did a one-day casino, but unfortunately, I don't think I'll be able to fit that this time. And then what I did is every, I think I had a little timer, every five minutes when the timer went off, they had to stop and calculate the odds of them winning that particular poker hand. Texas Hold'em, though, which was not popular at that point, uh, much more difficult because then you, anyways, seven, it would be a tree with seven level. Ugh. There are 30 students in a class. 16, turn the page. 16 students surf the internet. 10 students, I really had to tell you to turn the page because there was a long delay there. Okay. And 10, you know, I know Dylan, are you awake? Can you make it? You're live? 10 students use email. Six do both. What's the probability that a randomly selected student surfs or uses email? Okay. So if I read this correctly, what's the probability that we're using the internet according to this question? What out of what? 16 out of 
30. What's the probability that we use email? 10 out of 30. What's the probability? Did they give me both? Because and means both. Oh, yes, they did. So the probability of I and E is 6 out of 30. What's this question want me to find? The probability that they surf the internet or use the email. So I know that probability of I or E is going to be the probability of I plus the probability of E minus the probability, minus Mr. Dewitt, not equals, minus the probability of I and E. 16 plus 10, take away 6. 16 plus 10, take away 6 is 20. That's the formula approach. Another approach is to use a Venn diagram. Now, a Venn diagram takes a bit longer to set up. I use a Venn diagram if the question has a part A, part B, part C, because I can answer everything instantly from the Venn diagram without having to redo the formula after the formula after the formula. What would the Venn diagram look like? I would draw this. And I would say we have internet, email. And if I'm using a Venn diagram, I either want to start from the very center and go outwards, or I want to start from the outside and go inwards. Okay. How many am I going to put here? What's the both? Six. How many kids surf the internet? Sixteen. Does that mean I'm going to put a sixteen right here? No. What am I going to put there, Victoria? 10, because that gives me 16 overall in this circle. What am I going to put right here? 4. Oh, how many use neither? What's going out here? 10? Clearly this was typed at the beginning of the century. These were typed up in 2001. And you see, now I can answer all sorts of questions. How many only use email but don't actually surf the web? What's the probability? Four out of 30. See it? What's the probability that uh, they surf the web but they don't have an email address? 10 out of 30. So I use a Venn diagram. There's 10 using email. Right there. And I'm glad you did that. Yeah, you need to realize these numbers won't blatantly appear because you always have to take into account the overlap. Example three, are they just asking one question or are they asking more than one question? I'm going to use a Venn diagram here. says, what Wilma the WebWiz submits bids on two web design projects. She thinks she has a 70% chance of getting the first project, but just a 50% chance of getting the second. She puts only a 25% chance on getting neither. So I'll call this the first project. I'll call this the second project. And I said to you, I always like to start in the middle. I always want to see if they have told me both. Have they told me both? Jesse, you're correct. Say it loud. So you know what I'm going to do? You know what the odds of getting both is? Why, it's X. I'll put something there. Victoria, in the previous question, when we had a 6 there, how did you get this 10? You went 16 
take away 6. What number is going to go here? 70. Ari. Got to be. Oh, and what number is going to go here? 50 minus x? Got to be. Oh, what are her ch what's her chance of getting neither? 25. Now, they'll either give you the overlap or they'll give you the outside. They have to give you one of those. Okay, I mean, they will. Here's our final little conclusion. If I add this and this and this and this all together, what percent should I end up with grand total at the very, very end if I add up every single possible outcome? It's got to be 100%. Let me say that again, but with math. If I add that and the middle overlap and circle 2 and the 25, that has to add to 100. Or in the previous example, it would add to 30 if you're actually putting the people in there. Here it's percentages. And usually my rule of thumb is if it's percentages, I almost always fall back on a Venn diagram because I can also do most of the arithmetic just in my head. I can subtract from 100 or add to it pretty good. Um, I have minus x plus x minus x. When I go minus x plus x minus x, two of my x's cancel, and I end up with just a sim single solitary x. Oh, and I have 70 plus 50 plus 25. What is 70 plus 50 plus 25? Oh, sorry, a minus x. Did I say a plus x? I'm sorry. A minus x. plus 145 equals 100. Or, uh, thinking about it, so Ian, 145 take away the middle equals 100. What does x have to be? What's the middle got to be? Tyler. So now I'm going to quickly, very quickly, redo my Venn diagram. I'm not going to redraw it. I'm going to go cross that out. What's going there? 45. Cross this out. What's 70 minus 45? 25. Cross this out. What's 50 minus 25? 45, sorry. 5. I can now answer every question. Ready? What's the probability that she gets both projects? 45%. What's the probability that she gets at least one? Now, at least one means one or the other or both. What's the probability she gets only the first one, but not both? See it? What? 25? What's the probability that she gets only one project, but not both? 30. Yep. No, that's both. It says only the first project. This here is the first project and the second project. Right? Only the first means you get the first one, but you're not allowed to get both. Yeah. Here? That's at least one, or that's at least one, or that's at least one. Add those three. Those are all at least one of the two projects. Yep. And you might have noticed, Miguel, as a shortcut, I could have said, well, if the odds of her getting none is 25%, the odds of her getting at least one is 75%. It's the complement. Could have done that, too. Let's try a few more from the workbook. If you are would be so kind as to turn to page... 
431. Four hundred and thirty-one. These two events right here, mutually exclusive. Blah 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 blah. Four thirty-two. There's some with overlap. What you want to look at is at the bottom of page four thirty-two. This is the formula that appears on your formula sheet. Oh, and if there is no overlap, what is and? zero which becomes or modifies jesse into that equation there i really don't even bother memorizing this i always just write this out and then oh and is zero great i cross it out why memorize two different equations when one really does the trick and let's highlight the word mutually exclusive in our notes as well so when you're studying you know what that was So very quickly, we're not going to write stuff down. We're just going to do these orally. If we draw a card from a standard deck, are events A and B mutually exclusive? Yes or no? No, you can be a face card and a club. So they're not. There would be an overlap. I'd have to think that through if I was calculating this out. Two dice are thrown. Are events A and B mutually exclusive? The dice show the same value, or what we used to call doubles. And the total score is 11. Can you be doubles and get a score of 11? No. In fact, what does it have to be if you're getting a score of 11? What must your dice show? 6 and 5, right? Somebody say 7 and 4? Really? Oh, boy. Here are four events, A, B, C, and D. Which ones are mutually exclusive? Which ones have no overlap? Which ones can't happen at the same time? B and D, I agree. Another one. A and C. Can't be a club and a face card. Sorry, can't be a uh, face card and an ace. Ace doesn't have a face. There is no face on ace. There, I think I've been through that one before, isn't it? Okay. So, example four is the one I really want to look at. Use the following information to determine whether they're mutually exclusive. If they're mutually exclusive, that means and has to be zero. So if they're mutually exclusive, they've given me the probability of A, I don't know what it is, probability of B, I have no idea what event B is, and they gave me or, If and equals zero, what we're really asking is, I'll put an equal sign Ian with a question mark above it, does 7 over 12 equal 1 quarter plus 1 third? If it does, then and must have been zero and they're mutually exclusive. And I'm not going to bother wasting my time with a common denominator. 1 quarter plus 1 third equals math, enter, enter. Oh, is 1 quarter plus 1 third 7 over 12? It is. So I guess I don't need the and. Oh, that must mean that the and must have been 0. There was no overlap. Therefore, mutually exclusive Venn diagrams make things way easier what's the probability that a student did math homework from this Venn diagram don't say 47% because it's not yeah it's those two right those are both in the big math circle 47 plus 16 is 50 63 what's the probability that they did math and English homework at the same evening 16%. That's the overlap. What's the probability of math or English homework? That or that or that. Or means add. Add them up. Oh, you know what? Yeah, did you go 88 or did you go 100 minus 12? Probably faster to go 100% minus 12%. Everything's got to be in the middle. 88%.
Example 7. Okay? This is an example of a kind of question that I would choose to use a Venn diagram, not a formula. Why? I notice there's a part A and a part B. I read the question really carefully. Did they give me the overlap? Read carefully. Did they? What word tells you and? What's another word for and? It begins with the letter B. Okay, both. Another word for and. So I'm going to do a little Venn diagram right over here. And it looks like we have headache relief and backache relief. Except I did a really bad diagram. Let's make it a little bit larger, Mr. Duick, so that I can... There. And I said, whenever possible, we want to start with both. If not, we put an X there and work our way out by subtracting. What's both? 36. So what's going to go right here, not 60? How many only cured their headache but didn't cure their backache? 24. How many got backache relief but still had a headache? 90. Now this is not percentages. This won't add to one, this won't add to 100. What will this add to? The total number of people. How many people did the drug not work for? Yeah, more specific. 50? No? 60? Let's see. 60 plus 90 is 150. I think the answer is 50. So... Now they want the probability. So the probability for part A is going to be out of 200. How many got relief from at least one symptom? 150. How many got relief from neither? 50. All right. Or formula, pretty good. Venn diagram, actually handier. More... It takes more time to draw it. The formula is quick, which is why if they're only asking one thing, usually I fall back on the formula. But if they ask more than one, it's worth drawing the Venn diagram because everything falls out there. Homework. Number one. Um... Number one is just asking which of these are mutually exclusive, yes or no. It, it's here, right? Think about it. Um, four. Five is good. Uh, yeah, six is good. Seven. Eight. Nine. Skip ten, but I have to do the election question since that's tonight. Eleven and twelve is good. The answer is D for eleven. Why? And if you know what, as I've said, if you can do the homework in your head, check the answer if it's right. Don't bother writing it, circle it, and don't, don't do any work. Because why waste time practicing what you already know? We actually, on Friday after school, several of us teachers, we had a, got together and tried to discuss what we thought homework would look like in the next 10 years and where we thought it was going. Because we really think, in particular, in elementary schools, like, we have 8-year-olds coming home with an hour and a half of homework. Really? I don't remember that. I 
anyways, we tried to discuss what good homework is and what bad homework is. And I know hopefully you guys have noticed I'll never give you something to shut you up or to keep you busy. I will always assign what I think is what you need to know to master it, but you need to adjust the homework to yourself. 